Yeah, hello again. As promised, I decided to do uh, some videos explaining how to do gradients. The A10M, A20M, A10T, A20T. I gotta say uh, the disclaimer here, <laughs> which is that everything in this video will only pertain to these printers with stock firmware, Marlin 1.1.8. So only work for that firmware. It won't work in Marlin 2 because our gradient command uh, changes a bit when we move into Marlin 2.0. So that'll be a separate video. This is only for Marlin 1.1.8. Okay, you see I have Cura open here. And this will work uh, with any slicer, any slicer that allows you to put in a start script, or uh, we can do it by G-code. The different ways of going about gradient, you can use your LCD controls and set your gradient on there when you start your print. Or you can use uh, GTAX color mixer program if you can get it to work, which uh, can be problematic. But this is the way I do it. I uh, I don't use either of those other two uh, options. I only use M166 command and put it in the uh, G code um, because it offers me uh, much more control. As far as I'm concerned, it's the easiest way to do it. Um, so anyway, <laughs> when you're going to slice for a, uh, a, a print that you want in a gradient, you see I have my simple cylinder here. I use this cylinder a lot with the gradient. Uh, you get a couple of filaments so you don't know how well they're going to mix or do you want to you want to figure out uh, well, what percentage of a mix to set. Uh, this is the way to go about it. You uh, print a gradient uh, that starts all at uh, E0 or extruder 1 in uh, Cura. And as Z height progresses, the mix changes and by the time you get to the top it's all E1 or uh, whatever colors extruder 2 starts at E0 ends at E1 on our printers so it's a handy uh, handy tool to have I posted it uh, already set with the gradient command on uh, at least one of the Facebook pages but uh, this shows you how to go about uh, doing it for yourself so what we're going to do when we slice for a gradient we just use uh, E0 the default extruder as if, as if it's going to be a single color print and one thing we need to know no matter what uh, print you have going here is you need to know how tall it is and uh, obviously this cylinder is uh, 100 millimeters tall we need to know uh, we need to know that for our M166 command so you've set up all your all your other print parameters. These will not affect the M166 command that much. What we really need to know is uh, where we want our gradient to start, which we're going to do at the very bottom, where we want it to end, which is the very top, and of course that's at the 100 millimeter mark. So how we do this in Cura, and you can do this, like I say, in any slicer that has a start uh, where you can put uh, commands into a start script, which I'm pretty sure all of them have. Uh, I chose to use Cura for this video just because uh, so many people use it. I don't use it often, just uh, <laughs> once in a while. Anyway, so where we do this is in the printer settings right here in the start G code. You can see I've already got one there. I'll erase it for the moment. So, M166. This is our start uh, command here. S1, the first parameter is just uh, set. It's going to set the gradient to on with the 1. Um, I think you can do it without the S1 but I've never bothered to try. I've always just written it in there because that was the instructions I was given. <laughs> so, M166S1. Now your first real parameter here is A. 
A is your starting Z height. So I want my gradient to start at the very bottom of the print, which is a Z height of zero. So we're going to start our gradient at the Z height of zero. Our next parameter is Z. This is our ending Z height, or we want the gradient to finish by. And we know our cylinder is 100 millimeters tall, and that's where I want it to end. So the end Z height is 100. Our next parameter is P. P is the starting E0 percentage. Our left extruder on our printers, uh, default extruder E0, or it's called uh, extruder 1 in Cura. We want that to start at 100%. And then Q is our last parameter, and this is our ending percentage for E0. By the time we get to the top of the cylinder, we want E0 to be at 0%. That's it. That's the whole thing. Now, uh, you may be asking, well, what about E1? Don't we have to say something about E1? No. We don't, and the reason is, if E0 is at 100%, then uh, pretty obviously E1 would be at 0%. And if our gradient said uh, we wanted to start E0 at 30% and at 0%, then obviously the mix we start with would be 30% E0 and 70% E1. We don't have to specify E1. Uh, the firmware takes care of that. So we'll go back, set that back to 100. That's it. That's all we have to do. Once we slice this and go to print it, our gradient on that cylinder, or whatever print we have in here, will start off at, at the very beginning, or a Z height of zero, with extruder zero being at 100%, and it's gonna end at 100 millimeters, with extruder zero being at 0%. That's it, that's, that's all we have to do. Close that, close that, and I've already sliced it with this in here. I've already saved it. We'll go look at that on my nice cluttered desktop. <laughs> if you think that desktop, desktop is cluttered, you ought to see my brain after a day of uh, being on Facebook. All right, so we go here and look in our G code, and there's our M166 command right there. As I said, that's it. It's going to print that uh, gradient all the way. And let's say you already have a file, a single color file that you uh, print, that you uh, sliced already, but you'd like to have it be a gradient. Well, you can just take this M166 command. Let's see, we got puppy right here. Well, puppy is the uh, you can see this file is sliced with uh, S3D, so there's a lot more stuff at the beginning. Uh, puppy is the uh, dog that comes on the A10 uh, SD card. You can't do this to the puppy that came on the dog uh, that came with the A10M or A20M because those were uh, made into a gradient using GTEx color mixer software, so the M166 command will have uh, no effect in there whatsoever. Um, so we'll take our M166. Hmm, okay. Not sure what happened there. Okay, but Puppy is 90 millimeters tall, not 100. So. We need to just change our NZ height to 90. You can leave it 100. Um, and in some cases you might want to. What would happen is by the time it got to the end of the print, 90 millimeters, the mix just wouldn't be all the way to, uh, you know, all uh, E1. It would be, uh, what, 90%. In some circumstances, depending on how well your filaments mix, well, you may want to adjust where the Z height starts and ends um, for that reason. Um, 
but uh, that's it for the simple gradient that's all you have to do and that <laughs> I can't think of anything more to say about it uh, at this point um, will the next video like I said we'll get into uh, well actually we can do that now okay let's just say we have a print like like this vase yeah yeah this vase was kinda crappy two filaments you're gonna find that black almost never mixes well with any other filament I haven't found a black yet that will mix well you can see the aqua fresh uh, effect was in full bloom here on this vase but for the sake of uh, what we want to do here let's say we wanted to do this uh, kind of effect with the puppy that we just had open here and we wanted to start uh, with E0 at the bottom change all to E1 till halfway up the print and then turn around and go back the other way so now we have to put two gradients in here not at all difficult so we're going to start at the bottom go to all E0 by the time we're half up the E1 by the time we're half up the print then turn around and make our gradient go from E1 down to E0 here's how we do that uh, here's puppy get puppy back here okay so puppy we know is 90 millimeters tall but in this case to do the two gradients to go up and back we're gonna want our gradient our first gradient to end start at E0 or at Z0 sorry we want it to end at 45 millimeters halfway up we're going to start, uh, we're going to keep our percentages the same. We're going to start with E0 and then have it be all E1 by the time it's at 45 millimeters. So let's just copy this. So what we do is we now need to put another M166 command at 45 millimeters. So in WordPad, use find, we want to find Z45. find the next one okay so we see Z45 you may not find the exact number as you see here it's uh, Z45 and two, th two uh, hundreds thousandths whatever so what we do it's right here we pop in our M166 command but now we're at 45 millimeters so what we want to do is change our starting height for this gradient to be 45 and we want it to end at 90 we want it to start with E0 being at 0% and end with E0 being 100% there you go save this and print it it'll print similar to this um, but with this effect and that's about as deep as I want to go into the uh, uh, just simple gradient that's uh, that's it for this the next video I'll do I'll touch on or start with Marlin 2 uh, let me say Marlin 2 gets a little more involved but because of that there's a lot more you can do with it I suggest if you're going to do a lot of gradients and want to get uh, fairly complicated oops I didn't need to open my browser uh, when you want to do things like uh, like this base whoops <laughs> sorry about that <clears throat> there we go uh, where you can see there's actually one two three four five six uh, I guess seven gradients in that vase and if you see my PDF I did a year more than a year ago I think uh, in one of the Facebook groups uh, how I made a multi gradient vase with M166 or some title like that this is the vase that it was in that I did that with I did it the same way we just did with the puppy I just went in the G code 
figured out the heights I wanted my gradients to change at and popped the M166 commands in the G-code and uh, did that. So you can get pretty involved. Um, but if you're going to do a lot of things like this uh, and want to maybe make some prints, I'm not sure if I have them. Oh, here's another one. This was another crappy print. You can see I had a lot of stringing back then. Uh, what I was trying to do, this was a two-part STL, or two STL files, a two-color print. What I was trying to do is go from one color to another on this segment. And you can see this one swapped and went the other way around. This is what I was trying to do here. Um, you can do that uh, pretty easily with Marlin 2. You can do it with Marlin 1.1.8. Um, but it gets a little more involved. I suggest everybody upgrade to Marlin 2.0. Uh, because between the mixing and especially the gradients like this, um, you can do some pretty uh, pretty interesting things. Oh, like uh, Marvin here, or uh, the astronaut, or the Matter Hacker's astronaut. You can see that uh, on the bottom of the shoes, and I put this, uh, I, I broke Marlin, uh, Marvin into... Uh, I think 24 separate STLs and put it on the Facebook page I'm usually on so that um, all these segments you can see are a separate STL even these little bits up here so you can make these any color you want but you can see I did uh, his boot tips as a gradient his hands or gloves were a gradient the visor was two gradients like we just looked at but then the yellow was all solid, the blue here was all solid, and all the bits around the back were all a solid color. When you go to want to do this and you see it has to use a purge block or a, a, a purge bucket could work too. Um, in Marlin 2 you can assign a gradient as a tool so it will easily use the uh, purge block. So that's one of the main reasons I uh, I keep with Marlin 2. I suggest if you're going to get into doing stuff like this, um, Marlin 2 is, is really the way to go. And when you see that video, you'll start to understand why. Anyway, I'm going to end that here. Uh, that shows you how to do this simple gradient. And I uh, hope that helps you out. See you on the next one.